Hi, I'm Paul Heaney, Editorial Director of Design World, and we're here just outside of Cologne, Germany at IGIS headquarters, and I'm joined by Frank Blaise, who is the CEO of IGIS. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Thank you for being here, Paul. It's an honor. Thank you. Frank, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, 3D printing. There's a lot of talk about 3D printing and how it's going to change the future of manufacturing. And I think IGIS is one of the companies, in my opinion, that seem to be taking a lead on this. You're actually actively incorporating it in some different ways. So can you talk about the initiatives you have in that area? Well, thanks for saying that, uh, Paul. We, we believe we take a lead in a niche, and the mm -hmm. niche is wear parts, okay. printed wear parts. So it's our dream that people who use, who need to spare parts, can get them printed from plastic or mm -hmm. made laser center from plastic and use them perfectly. Mm -hmm. and one little example is, I hope I can say, one of the big elevator companies in Germany okay. just had this huge tower and they mm. needed a, for a new elevator, needed a sliding wear part quickly. Okay. They uploaded it, got it, it works. Um, so motion plastics is our theme and wear parts printed, that's our niche. Okay, great. Now, it seems like you're having a very successful 2017 here. Um, is there an area, you know, whether it be bearings, whether it be more on the cable side, that you see the, the biggest potential for growth in the, in the near term? Um, <clears throat> when you look at our wide product range right mm -hmm. now, obviously the smaller ones like the 3D printing, mm -hmm. the robotics, the plastic ball bearings, mm -hmm. etc., are poised to grow. At the same time, with the motion plastics, we still have so much to conquer, okay. so many uh, industries and applications where we believe we can give customers a success that we, maybe we are wrong, but we are optimistic that all the areas we are in can grow. Okay. Now, with the each and a cable, I do admit that it depends, because we have a higher, larger market share there, mm -hmm. much, it depends on the market, sure. on the automation, on the machine mm -hmm. builders, um, that remains to be seen. Okay. But I want to say all the other products, even where we are larger, the bushings, we still have a huge market share mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to gain if we have a successful applications for customers. Sure. Now, you mentioned the robotics, and you have a pretty interesting, uh, almost a sub-business unit in robotics. Can you talk a little bit about the, the genesis of how that came to be and what your expectations are for the robotics end of things? The genesis is a mad professor in Berlin, okay. <coughs> uh, Professor Benesch, who developed a uh, bionic, mm -hmm. wire-driven plastic robot principle, mm -hmm. and we bought the rights. Okay. That's seven years ago, I believe. Mm -hmm. But we never... We still sell it, but mm -hmm. we didn't, so far nobody got a wire rope robot to work reliably mm -hmm. for many millions of cycles in the industry. Mm -hmm. And we didn't either. It's good for many aspects also. Man-machine mm -hmm. collaboration is very good because it's soft, okay. but there's a limit to the life. From that, we gathered that people like low-cost robotics, mm -hmm. and so we focused on other solutions with plastic gears and robots and from that we go on. We hope our dream is to enable robotic companies, machine companies and users to build or apply very low cost robots. Okay. One and a half, two thousand dollars including controls. We are not there yet but we are working. Frank, as you've grown I guess over the, the years and the decades, uh, I feel like you've managed to keep sort of a, a small feel to a very large company. How do you think that you've you've done that with your workforce? Well, thank you that you say that. We hope we do it. Mm -hmm. uh, this facility is relatively large. Um, I, I think we have been fortunate that we already had business units from the start. We had mm -hmm. the chains, the cables, even okay. though they worked together. We had the plastic bushings, we have the linear bearings. And you met many people here, and mm -hmm. I think you see that many of them are very enthusiastic about what they do, and that's our, let's say, my privilege that we have been able to attract people mm -hmm. who very often, most time of the day, is like what, <laughs> like what they're doing Good, and yeah. are successful with it and leave a mark in the world. And I think that contributes a lot to this smaller feel that you have described. Mm -hmm. But we need to be careful to keep it once mm -hmm. the company is growing even more. Sure, sure. And then lastly, uh, for our engineering audience out there, uh, maybe there's a, a young engineer out there who has an idea or has a very entrepreneurial spirit to, to him or her. What advice would you give them in uh, maybe going out and, and starting their own uh, company? 
even though <coughs> this is a second generation company, um, it was very small when I mm -hmm. started and I almost there were several times when I wanted to give up. Really? Because we didn't things didn't go nearly as fast as I wanted. Sure. And back then, early eighties, Steve Jobs, for example, was the icon and of course still is. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's not a great advice, if we want to call advice, persistence and... Uh, some patience too, perhaps? Some patience, persistence, patience and, and looking at the small successes. If you have mm. convinced one customer mm -hmm. to trust you, okay. maybe you can convince a thousand or a hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. And if you have that first feeling that you did something well to somebody, that should carry you above above more barriers, more hurdles. That makes a lot of sense. Very wise advice. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us. Uh -huh. And uh, for more videos like these, please visit designworldonline.com.